I would like now to present a case from uh, my country, from Indonesia. Uh, this is the cryptococcal meningitis in a child with leukemia, but it's not actually uh, leukemia. We will see later. So, cryptococcosis. I think I will skip this slide because all you, all of you, are know about cryptococcus. But I will go to the timeline of the case report. This is a patient of uh, acute uh, leukemia, and she already treated with uh, chemotherapy for about a year. And then she readmitted to the hospital because of uh, she has to do another uh, chemotherapy. But then in May 2021, she also suffering from COVID-19. And then uh, in June 2021, he, he was, she was diagnosed as cryptococcus. And in September, relapse, and in April, she is in a good clinical condition, but then readmitted in May, and uh, she again suffering from COVID-19 and cryptococcus relapse, and then she passed away on August 2020. <clears throat> and she is a 14-year-old girl suffering from acute lympho lymphocytic leukemia since June 2020, and she underwent chemotherapy. It's good. She has a remission but she has under the maintenance uh, chemotherapy and then back to the hospital for the, uh, uh, what is it, for the reinduction. And then during the reinduction, she's suffering from uh, a fever, but when we're looking for the source of, of infection, we only find this as epigenetic nidis, but it is only isolated from the port of the a catheter, but not from the blood culture. She she <clears throat> she have uh, she had uh, antibiotics and she's improving. But then on May 2021, she was suffering from she was uh, diagnosed as suffering from uh, COVID-19, not that uh, uh, severe until she has to go to the ICU. No, but during that time, the the. CXR, so a minimal lesion in the lung. So the doctor asked us in the laboratory to test the uh, aspergillus uh, anti antigen, and the result is the index is 1.8. And according to the immunosuppressed condition, the doctor gave her uh, <clears throat> uh, voriconazole continued by uh, itraconazole. My question here is for um, Atel and Patul, they are my mycology family, and I used to call them Atel, Atul and Patel without doctor, sorry. <laughs> but I want to ask you, is this index 1.8, is, uh, is really a high index, or it is, uh, uh, what is it, intervened by the administration of the, some antibiotics or the chemotherapy? What do you think? Is it correct that we use VFAN, uh, 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 Voriconazole, for this patient? Please, thank you. Yeah. So uh, interpretation of uh, the fungal biomarkers are very tricky, especially like when you look at the, uh, the galactominin interpretation. It is validated in multiple studies in uh, neutropenic settings. And for non-neutropenic settings, I believe that when he develops uh, COVID-19 pneumonia or she develops COVID-19 pneumonia, she is not receiving chemotherapy and she is non-neutropenic, right? Patient was not neutropenic at this time. Neutropenic. Patient was neutropenic. neutropenic. Yeah, then if the patient is neutropenic, so this is a neutropenic setting. So I think we uh, highly value uh, the, the galactominin level, especially when somebody has uh, uh, the neutropenia. The reason is that when you look at the, the kinetics of galactominin, the galactominin requires uh, 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 the absolute neutrophil count to be less than 500 to produce NGO invasions and produces uh, the positive uh, the galactominin mm -hmm. level into the serum, right? So if you look at the pathogenesis of aspergillus infection, after entering into the alveoli, there will be a replication. And this replicating, uh, uh, the, the aspergillus species will start producing uh, or releasing galactominin into the alveoli. But this galactominin is a large molecule. It cannot diffuse into the bloodstream unless patient develops some NGO invasions. And NGO invasion generally occurs when some patient is having 
qualitative or the quantitative neutrophil dysfunctions. So angio invasions will give you a very high or the increased level of the galactominin. <coughs> the second important things that we should remember is that if somebody is having a functioning neutrophils into the peripheral blood, then this functioning neutrophils will take away uh, the galactominin very rapidly, right? So it will not allow galactominin to rise significantly. And the th third important mechanisms of uh, the elimination of the galactominin from the circulation would be renal and the kidney system, right? So those patients who has functioning kidney and the functioning renal system will eliminate galactominin very rapidly. So functioning neutrophils, normal organ functions will clear galactominin rapidly. But in the patient who has severe neutropenia, you expect uh, very high galactominin. So if patient is neutropenic here and 1.8 index galactominin, I think I'll take it positively and I will also go for a CT scan evaluation of this patient just to find out the, the area of involvement. Because X-ray chest is a very poor modality to assess uh, the invasive pulmonary aspergillosis in neutropenic settings. Thank you. How about you? Just, just a couple of comments here. I mean, yes, let's not please. forget that the galactomanan test is a pan-fungal test. At this stage, I don't think we can say definitely that it's aspergillus. It most probably is an aspergillus biofilm in terms of angio invasion, but you know, there are many, many models which give you a very strong positive reaction in the GN test. And candida, don't forget candida will express galactomana. So mm -hmm. these are just some, some sort of comments, but I think uh, an index value of, of that level in, in serum is, is pretty indicative of at least an agent of higher hyphomycosis, and most likely aspergillus in this, in this sort of setting. And also, I think it's quite useful, and there are soon to be commercial tests to look for glactomanan in patient's urine. Very soon, we'll have a commercial test for, for glactomanan testing in, in urine. Yeah. That's just a point of information. Uh, yeah, uh, the problem is we don't have the glactomanan in urine, but in, uh, in our study in Jakarta, we find out that more than 30% patient with galactomannan positive in their serum is also positive for galactomannan of histoplasma. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's cross-reaction. Yeah. In the serum, in the serum, yeah. Do you have any, any opinion, Mete? No? Okay, I will, con oh, you want to, Say something, Atul? No, same. So, so histoplasma galactomenon, uh, it generally cross-react with the aspergillus galactomenon. And in a situation where you do not have an access to the, the uh, histoplasma urinary antigen, you may probably utilize the serum galactomenon to diagnose and to monitor the treatment for histoplasma. There are few, I mean, good publications on using galactomenon to monitor uh, the treatment of histoplasma. OK, thank you. Then I will continue. <clears throat> A month later, the patient complaining of headaches, but the temperature is still a little, a little bit above normal, and itraconazole continued. Brain MRI saw small lesion in the left frontal lobe, and the uh, radiologist give us a differential diagnosis. Maybe this is chloroma because the patient suffering from for ELL. The, the condition is good, and we plan to uh, send him, send her to ophthalmology and also neurologist. And the 6MP and MT, MTX was restarted. But the result of ophthalmology is there is a blurred uh, vision, and there is a optical neuropathy, and also a, a kind of a soul in this optical, uh, in this uh, optical nerve. And he uh, suggests to give the, pre the patient prednisolone and uh, prednisolone injection and continued by oral prednisolone and citoscholine 100 milligram. The visual is improved, but before we give her uh, what is it uh, prednisolone, we have uh, arguments because we are afraid of the cryptococcus if the, of the cryptococcosis. And, but the doctor said she needs prednisolone for her eyes. What's uh, your opinion, Atto and Patel? Is it uh, the, uh, the giving of prednisolone in this patient is uh, suitable, is good for the benefit of uh, patient due its cryptococcosis, her cryptococcosis? 
So if we have a confirmed diagnosis of cryptococcal infections, now we have a good evidence that steroids are generally contraindicated. It, it increases the mortality in a patient who has cryptococcal meningitis, right? So that is a, uh, the study known as dexamethasone in cryptococcal meningitis trial. It was stopped uh, in between because they, they, it, they reported very high mortality. Mm -hmm. So I think I agree with you that, I mean, we will start, I mean, avoid uh, corticosteroids if we are having a strong clinical suspicions of cryptococcal infections. And first of all, like we would like to confirm by CSF examination, uh, just to make sure that we are, I mean, uh, not uh, dealing with cryptococcal infections. Okay, thank you. Then I will continue. Then a fever and headache was worsened. A lumbar puncture was conducted and we diagnosed she suffering from cryptococcosis. And um, we do susceptibility study and the result is uh, all the uh, antifungal is susceptible, but not for fluconazole. But we don't have any choice because at the time we don't have uh, amphotericin B available in the country. So we, we gave a fluconazole. And I want to ask you, um, Malcolm and Katrina, what do you think? Because this patient, the result of the susceptibility study for fluconazole is uh, Resistant. We use uh, um, this diffusion method for for the for the susceptibility study. We gave we gave we gave them uh, we gave her um, fluconazole high dose fluconazole. Um, I can't comment on disc diffusion because my understanding was you you can't rely on disc diffusion to mm -hmm. determine resistance. You need to do broth microdilution to actually say okay. something is, it might give you a guide, but you should back it up with, with um, broth microdilution testing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what, classi what classifies as resistance for cryptococcus for fluconazole, because I didn't, there were no breakpoints no that break I'm... No breakpoints, yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 I agree with you. That's why we, we continue to give her fluconazole. Yes, I would concur with that. I mean, I think it's quite difficult to interpret um, the MIC results with, mm -hmm. with um, this organism and, and this drug because there are no established clinical breakpoints. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank and you. Can you add some uh, additional point in your study in the HIV patient? There's no correlation between the MIC mm -hmm. of the fluconazole and the outcome of cryptococcosis. Okay, then the high dose fluconazole was ad administered. Uh, clean there is clinical improvement, but at the request of the parents, the patient was discharged from the hospital with fl fluconazole 200, two, two, two times a day. Uh, and on July uh, 13th, we do another MRI. We saw improvement. The lesion was low, uh, uh, smaller than before. And this is the, uh, the result of the leukocyte. Everything is uh, low, but the we couldn't find blood cell and uh, the, the function of the liver and kidney is in the, in the, uh, within the normal range. But on the third week of September, again, she, she was admitted to hospital because the fever and the seizures. A, a white blood cell was low, thrombocyte also low, and we do another lumbar puncture and we find that India ink is positive but and uh, cryptococcus antigen positive. Ambisome was administered and show clinical improvement. No seizure, no head, headache is uh, endured, but it's very uh, minor. And intracranial pressure was decreased. Hypokalemia was corrected and we gave her during the, 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 the chemotherapy, she, she has uh, intrathecal MTX, but at the same time, we also give her a five microgram of um, photoresin B intrathecally. But, and we saw that uh, India is still positive, culture negative, and opening pressure is only 12 centimeter. On the third week of September, uh, there is a clinical improvement, but and after two weeks of ambisome treatment, we start again uh, with the uh, intrathecal MTX and uh, giving the patient the fluconazole. Until the end of November, several LPs conducted. The India ink is always positive, but culture is always negative. Can I ask you, uh, uh, 
Catherine and Malcolm. Why is the result of culture is always negative, but we also we always find the the fungus in the India intestine. Is it is it tell us something that this fungus is already died or what? Or I, what? I think it's a good sign that it's culture negative. Is my understanding? It can be, remain. Um, you can have evidence of the organism in the CSF for quite some time, mm -hmm. but the fact that it's culture in negative is a, is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Um, and same with the lateral flow, it can be positive for ages. Yeah, I think you can get persisting anthogenemia, um, but negative culture. Be very interested to know what the, the level of fluconazole was in the in the CSF, but we very rarely do TDM on, on CSF, that, but that would be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I, I think, I mean, uh, this patient, like he is, uh, she has received uh, corticosteroids initially. Uh, before the diagnosis of uh, cryptococcal meningitis, then successfully induced with the uh, fluconazole monotherapy, and she does had clinical response. And now, she pre again presented with clinical deterioration, mm -hmm. right? And uh, yeah. the patient's CSF showed a positive cryptococcal antigen and uh, positive India ink with sterile culture, right? So I think, I mean, probably we are dealing with the paradoxical worsening. The reason is that once you, I mean, remove the corticosteroids, once you remove the immunosuppressions in non-HIV, non-transplant cryptococcal uh, meningitis patients, you expect that there should be uh, the significant mounting of inflammatory response into the cranial cavity. And that can lead to a profound clinical worsening. And uh, in typical uh, scenario, like you have a positive antigen, you have a positive India ink, and the culture remains sterile but there will be increase in the, the cells into the CSF. The sugar may be uh, lower level normal to normal, and uh, you may also demonstrate the increase in the CSF protein level. So all these changes or the markers of inflammation will be there in such situation. And here like patients requires like control of the raised intracranial pressure by the lumbar puncture and addition of corticosteroids if patient has significant clinical or the neurological worsening. And uh, here also like you said that MRI is also showing the evidence of meningoencephalitis. Mm -hmm. So culture negative, I, I'm convinced uh, it, when it is negative at two occasion, I think probably we are dealing with some paradoxical worsening in this situation. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I back to the patient. Um, she still have the fluconazole, and uh, always we we do LPs because that's part of the treatment of cryptococcosis. And the India ink is always positive, but culture is always negative. But at the end of May 2020, she started com complaining of intermittent headache, headaches, and it is worsening. Severe headache, vomiting, photophobia, and LP was conducted. And now we see the opening pressure is high, 60 centimeters. A bit cloudy, India in positive, and we don't see any malignant cells. And MRI, we saw the meningoencephalitis and leptomeningeal enhancement of left temporal occipital region. Fluconazole was increased to 200, two times, two times a day, 400 milligram IV. And three days later, uh, we do another LPs and now opening pressure is 84 centimeter, yellowish but clear, the eye positive, culture show 410 CFU, and all were susceptible, and no malignant cells. See here? Then we gave ambisome, and we see here the improvement of the patient. The, the lesion is this, uh, minimal, and uh, compared with before the ambisome administration. In April 2020, we gave, um, still gave fluconazole 200 milligram a day, low dose steroid, and maintenance with MP and MTX. And clinically, radiology laboratory all are very good, and vision was improving. Periodic LPs performed gave positive TI still, but culture is always negative. But end of May 2022, started complaining of uh, intermittent headaches, and it is worsening. And again, we do the LP, and now the opening pressure is still 60 centimeter. MRI, meningoencephalitis, but in the left temporal occipital region, and uh, uh, the, the, sorry, I think, yes. 
And then, uh, sorry, I, I missed this. And uh, we, we back to the patient and we combined the ambisome with proconazole. It gave a good result. But at the request of the parents, patient discharged from hospital again with two point, with two uh, times 400 milligram of uh, fluconazole. But unfortunate, unfortunately at home, the parents decreased the dose to two times 300 milligram per day, orally. And uh, before this chart, this patient was, uh, we again tested for COVID-19 because his father suffering from COVID-19 and it is again positive. And at the end of this uh, uh, month, August, he, she passed away. Um, and this is the result of spinal fluid. It's always positive for India Inc, but culture still negative from uh, uh, end of 21 to, to August 22nd. And then I think this uh, patient is, uh, we don't have many patients with uh, a cryptococcal meningitis in COVID-19. And we don't also have no many patients in the, uh, uh, malignancy, hematology malignancy. But nowadays we saw that uh, increasing number of patients of non-HIV uh, with cryptococcosis. And I think uh, yesterday it's already, it's already mentioned what is the risk factors for this uh, type of patient. This patient with uh, 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 leukemia with COVID-19 and received chemotherapy and steroid. And I think both chemotherapy and, and steroid making the patient is very vulnerable to infection because it's, it, it is, uh, the patient is very immunosuppressed. And, uh, and COVID-19 is dysregulated uh, our immune system and it caused many fungal infection. Uh, we, we know Kappa, we know CAM, we know uh, CAC, and now we find out about, uh, about uh, cryptococcosis. Uh, <clears throat> in malignancy, uh, mortality due to cryptococcosis is very high, despite receiving amphotericin B therapy, which also occurs in this patient. At the end of his, uh, at the end before we discharge the patient, actually we provide amphotericin B again for re-induction uh, 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 with amphotericin B. But again, his parents uh, avoid, uh, reject to, to have the amphotericin B. So we couldn't give him, give her amphotericin B because of the rejection of the parents. And this is, uh, I think, this is, Another study of uh, a case report about cryptococcosis in COVID-19, it's also uh, passed away. We, uh, the condition is here is nearly the same with, uh, not the, nearly the same with our patient because there is still high white blood cell, not in our patient. And this is also another case of cryptococcosis in COVID-19, which is also died. And this is a cryptococcosis in hematology malignancy that is uh, uh, they compare between the hematology malignancy and non-hematology malignancy, and, and it showed that in um, ma uh, hematology malignancy, the case is lower than the non-hematology ma malig uh, malignancy. So in conclusion, cryptococcosis is starting to be widely reported among non-HIV patients, and our, our patient has concomitant AL and COVID-19 and both weaken the immune system that might, might cause the cryptococcosis. Recognizing cryptococcosis in these circumstances is require high index of suspicion. But in this patient, I think we are also competing with social media because the power of social media is very strong in this case. His parents, it's always, every time we find some new, uh, have new laboratory result or give a medicine, then his parent will go to Google doing something there and tell us that fluconazole is not good because it's caused uh, thrombocytopenia. And I don't want my, my child have this. So I think we will, we will continue to face this problem in the future that because we live in the borderless, uh, borderless uh, country, I think, and we can go to a, uh, uh, ma social media to search for the for the infor new information 
that sometimes interfere with our work in the hospital. And that's what we, uh, uh, we, we, what we experience in this study, because sometimes the patient, the father asks, uh, we have to discharge the patient, because I think in how, at, uh, the nosocomial infection in the hospital is quite high, and I want her at home, and I, can, I can't let you give him am amphotericin B, etc. So I think we will face this kind of uh, interference from uh, social media because it's quite powerful and it's easy to get. I think I close this presentation. Thank you very much. Can I have some? Uh...